Welcome to the fifth section of this volume, Auto Updates. This section will cover how to set up auto updates for all major platforms. We will start with macOS, where we will make use of a module that is part of Electron Builder called Electron Updater that makes setting up auto updates over GitHub or Vintray a breeze. The Windows version will also use the exact same module, Electron Updater, and as you will see, even the exact same code. Finally, neither Electron nor Electron Builder supports Linux auto updates, but I will show you how to use the set sync update mechanism from app images to roll your own Linux auto update story. Welcome to the first video of section number five, where we will cover how to set up auto updates for macOS applications. In this video, we will see what Electron Updater is, how to configure a macOS application to perform auto updates, and finally, we will see how our digital clock application updates live. Electron Updater is an open source module created by the Electron Builder project, and in fact, they are developed to be used in conjunction and fit very well together. Since we are already using Electron Builder, you will see that adding Electron Updater to the mix will be really simple. The Electron project itself only supports auto updates for macOS and Windows, so that's what Electron Updater will also support. This is how it works for Mac. We will generate a special Electron Builder Mac target called SIP and deploy it as we've been doing before. We will keep using GitHub releases for the remaining of this course, but Electron Updater, as well as Electron Builder, also supports Amazon's S3 and Bintray. When our application runs, it will check the service containing our files to determine what is the latest version. If there is a new version, it will proceed and download the zip target, which contains everything needed to update the application. Let's first install some NPM dependencies we will need to properly set up auto updates. First, let's install Electron Updater, the module that will take care of the actual auto updates. Apart from that, let's install Electron Log a very simple login module that we can tie to Electron Updater to see some debug information of how Electron Updater is performing its job. And finally, let's install Electron is Dev, a very simple module that it tells us is if we are running the application in development mode or not, since we don't want to trigger the auto update mechanism if so. Now let's take a look at our main.js file. The first thing we're doing here is require some of the dependencies we just installed. Then we will configure the Electron Updater logging mechanism to use the Electron Log module. We are basically telling Electron Updater to use Electron Log and to set the logging level to info. The Electron Updater module gives us an object that emits various events which we can use to know what's going on and even to implement a nice GUI to notify about available updates. The first event we will consider is checking for update. This event, as you can tell, will be emitted when the application is checking for an update. The next event we will listen to is update available, which will be emitted when Electron Updater the text that there is a new version of the app it can update to. The handler will also contain an info object, including some metadata about the update, like the version and the release date. You could use this information to present a model to the user and maybe even ask him if he wants to update or not. The update not available event, on the other hand, will be emitted if we are already in the last version, for example. If a new version is available, Electron Updater will proceed to download it. Once the download starts, 
It will periodically emit various download progress events containing information about the download progress. Here, I'm going to print the progress percentage so we can know how the download is doing. Once the download completes, the update downloaded event will be emitted. The handler will be able to access the update information object as in the update available event. If this event is emitted, you should call the quit and install function, which as you can tell, will quit the app, install the update, and then rerun the updated application. If you want to notify users about updates using GUI dialogs, you could present buttons to say update or remind me later, and call this quit and install function if the user clicked update. Finally, we should also listen for the error event in case something went wrong. Now that Electron Updater has been configured, we need to tell it when it should start checking for updates. In order to do so, we should call the check for updates function once the ready app event is emitted. The auto updates functionality will only be accessible from packaged applications, so we can now make use of the Electron East Dev module to only check for updates if we are not running in development mode. The last thing we should do is enable the zip Mac Electron Builder target in package.json. Mac zips are mandatory for auto updates, so make sure you enable them or nothing will work. Let's see how to updates in action. As you can see, I published various new releases of the digital clock application to GitHub releases, so we have several versions to play with. Since I enabled the zip Mac target, the GitHub releases files contain zip files, which should be only used for auto update purposes. Also, as soon as you enable the zip target, Electron Builder will also publish latest Mac, JSON, and YAML files, which contain some metadata Electron Updater will read when checking for updates, like the name of the zip package, a checksum, and more. In order to make things more interesting, I redesigned the clock application on version 2. Here's the old digital clock design we've been seeing all this time. And here's how version 2 looks like. Now let's do the following. Let's check out version 1.3.0 and use auto updates to move to version 2. Remember that auto updates will only work on packaged versions of our app, so let's run npm run dist. Also, for convenience, instead of opening the DMG, we will go to dist slash mac which contains the packaged version of the app without being wrapped in a DMG or PKG archive. Electron Log will print debugging information to the console. So to make sure we can see this, I will execute the .app binary from contents slash macOS directly. As you can see, Electron Builder is checking for updates. And there you go, it found version two and it started to download it. I will speed up the video while the package is being downloaded. Once that's done, the app will close and there you go, we successfully updated to version two. In this video, we saw how to make use of the various events emitted by the Electron Updater module. Electron Updater doesn't work when running the application in development mode. So we saw how to run it only when the app is packaged by using the handy Electron East Dev module. Finally, we saw how a real auto update looks like.